So yeah. I have to I have to uh, thank Lori McIntosh, a good friend of mine, who has helped me assemble. She went out and found the headshots of all the 28 people I've interviewed over the last two and a half years. And she assembled them all for me in this wonderful configuration. Of course, I have to move like this so you can see some of them. Uh, and, um, some of them are very well established, like Jeff Berlin is a famous um, bass player who I met back when I was in college. He was a friend of a friend. And, uh, and he's very established. Then I have people like um, Ben Schwendener. Uh, David Tulk is a very, very established uh, new, new age uh, guy. Uh, so just some wonderful people. Joe Mulholland. And by the way, a jazz guy from Berkeley who's going to be visiting, visiting my home uh, next weekend, not this coming Saturday, but next weekend. And we're going to be giving a concert in the home and there'll be an opportunity to to um, to join on Zoom. I'll, I'll share that with you folks a little later. So just some wonderful musicians. And then I have people that no one's ever heard of that are very talented, but for whatever reason, they're not out there in the public. Uh, Joe Blanchard, for example, um, doesn't know anything about music, has no musical training whatsoever but has this amazing talent to, to create beautiful music on the piano. And uh, because he doesn't write it down, eventually some of that stuff gets lost, but he, he's recorded probably seven or eight CDs and um, just just a fascinating guy. Um, and then other people that you may not have heard of, there's a fellow here, a, little, uh, a young guy, uh, Nathan Asher Sherman, an incredible guitarist, but you know not famous yet, but just doing great stuff. And then there's other people like Greg that have wonderful music, but we haven't heard it. So tonight is also, in a way, his premiere, which I'm kind of excited about. So, so Greg, welcome, welcome to the group. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, I'm thrilled to be here. I appreciate it. First yeah. time doing something like this. So yeah, this is yeah, great. Excited. This is it's great. Really cool. You know, yeah. um, we got to know each other a little bit over the last week or so, and it's been fun. Uh, he's actually uh, renting a place temporarily while he's moving and going to a new place, and and so he calls this his mud room. But he's got. A beautiful leather couch and his piano there and he's all ensconced in it and uh and so what we're doing tonight is i don't have videos to show you that are online i don't have online things to show you i have the private uh music files of greg lanza that he's kindly sent to me and i've got them on, my, on our hard drive here so we're going to share some of them with you tonight but before i do that i'd love to talk a little bit more about how you got into music at all i mean one of the things i'm really envious of is you just naturally sing i mean you you didn't take singing lessons I guess you told me your mother had a beautiful voice. Was she a professional singer of any kind, or what was her background? No, she well, she, no, she, she was amateur. She never, she never got paid to sing, but she sang all through college and high school, and um, did some shows, some plays, um, well before I was born. Mm. Uh, so so I, I think I just, I must have acquired it from her. So she just has, a, she had a beautiful voice. No longer with us, but um, yeah, she. I would just, I would hear her sing around the house, and then you know, I would. I just could do it. I have no idea. I really don't. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm just lucky that I have a voice. Oh my and God. Yeah. yeah. It was no training, never have formal training. It's just, uh, I'm just really lucky with that. That is piano I had to work at, you know, piano didn't come like that. I had flip lessons as a kid. You know, that, that's yeah. Nice. You know, now, how about singing in public though? That didn't, you didn't get a uh, stage fright or anything like that. No, no. Oh, that yeah, is, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that is I don't I mean, sing, now right. in two in two ways at least two ways because that's that's incredible. Not only can you sing well, but you're not you're not nervous in public because you know that's no. that's a whole other thing. Um, so the, yeah. I'll share one funny story with you. I was at a showcase back in 2013, and I I introduced three kind of Broadway show kind of pieces that I had, and I had singers lined up for all three of them. It was amateur though. And the night of the performance, two of them backed out. They just said, "I can't do it. I can't do it." And oh. so. I sang them myself because I just, you know, and but I warned the audience. I said, you know, I don't know if this is a treat or not, but you're going to get the composer singing his own material. I am not a singer, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. And they were very, very kind to me. And I still have them online and I cringe when I hear myself, but they just ate it up because the songs themselves were so sweet. You know, they were love songs and the lyrics yeah. were fun. And the final song was sung by professionals and it kind of capped it off very nicely. But <laughs> <Wow. laughs> anyway, um, well, I'm a, I'm a, you know, we're going to talk more about you throughout the whole thing, but I want to start with a piece. Uh, let me just back up here a little bit. I want to sure. start with a piece that you call, let's see, is it Like like No Other? Do you want us to give us a little background on what that's about? Um, it's really about my wife. Uh, a lot of my songs, um, in, you know, typical songwriters, I think, that are married and have family, their kids and wife, uh, you know, can inspire them. A lot of stuff. So it really is just about, and I don't have the lyrics in front of me, so I can't remember all the lyrics, but 
I know it's just about us having having a having a really great time, which we always always do, and, and just throughout life. And I really always say you are like no. I've always said that line to her. You're like no one. You're like no one else I've ever met because she's wow super special. So yeah, so that's that's it. It really is just a, a, a you know love song to her. That's very sweet. Okay, yeah. let's give it a shot. Now I have to share the screen, but we don't have a video to share, so I have to learn how to do this here a little bit. So I'm sharing the screen, making sure I share the sound. Okay, screen. I think I'm going to share uh, screen one, which is you and me here. Uh, okay, and we're ready to go. So this is called Like No Other. This day is perfect in every single way. Like a storybook on our wedding day So much love and laughter To live our days I want to run to you I'm going to run with you Give me that love and fear And look my way as we Have some fun Dance with me, we're all alone Forget the world, we're on our own Cause things have just begun Remember All those nights we waited for The morning sun I'm gonna run to you I wanna run with you Because we always love one another You know, this really does have uh, great, you know, 
incredible potential. Um, as a, a Valentine's, I, first of all, it's a great Valentine's song, right? Right out of the gate. <clears throat> sure. Um, if you haven't listened to Rich Sokolow's interview yet. Um, um, no, I have you gave me his name. He's this you guy right here. Because what yeah. he did, he wrote a song to his wife. Very similar kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then he had this amazing um, video done, uh, kind of professionally done, <clears throat> and then played the hell out of, you know, put some ads in it and, and really promoted it on the internet. And he got um, a major company, I think it was, I may have this wrong, I think it was like a napkin company or something, to buy the rights <laughs> of that song for like three years and just run it and run it and run it. And he made some serious wow. money out of that. And wow. then he also has he has other songs that are on um, you know major TV stations, and so um, this song has just as much much potential. I mean, it's just a great. Now I have to ask you a couple of technical things. Um, sure. Is that you, know, you have duets going on? Is that your voice overlaid? Is that it's all you? Voice, doing? It's all me. Yeah, it's my voice great. overlaid. I have I have a harmonizer also um, that helps. Sometimes I, I used to just do it just me. I just have to have four or five tracks of all different harmonies, but then the right. harmonizer speeds things up. So. So does that mean you can just sing it at one time and tell it how to harmonize and it just has all the voices generated automatically? That's correct. That yeah. is phenomenal. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I had that idea in college many years ago and, and I wanted to do a, my um, thesis on it, but the guy wasn't, that, I thought it'd be a fun thing to design. Um, <laughs> and then also, um, I, is that Lou Tedesco on the guitar? Yeah, that that's Louie. He's so great. Very nice. Um, yeah, he's really He's just a great guitar player. He's really Very nice. so yeah. So he's on most of my songs. Yeah. Um, whether it's doing, he's usually doing the leads because uh, a lot of this, everything else you really hear is my keyboard and and uh, and Apple. Really, the Apple, some of the loops I use. And uh, I was going to ask, these. what are the patches you're using? Are they coming from Apple, or what? What's what are you using for that? They're all Apple. Patch, yeah. So I, all the sounds. Yeah. This is GarageBand. So the folks that are musicians listening to this that record. Um, they may be using Pro Tools, which is like one of the best programs, Logic, which is a step up from GarageBand. But I've become so proficient uh, at GarageBand that I'm leery to, to move on to something different because I it get sounds it. sounds great. Yeah. yeah for those yeah, people that don't know, I mean, I'll, I'll, there's no other live instruments on this except for, for um, <laughs> his voice no. and everything else is just overlaid. That's amazing. Yeah. That's Correct. Really yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 It's fun. Yeah. It's half the fun of it, actually. Uh, building that's and recording. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's talk about how you got into it. Uh, you, I guess you were pretty active in high school in music. What were you doing? Yeah, back I was. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, I, I probably started getting into bands around 14, 15 years old, and then uh, put together bands in high school, like a lot of folks do. We did battle the bands every, you know, every year we were there, and yeah. Uh, and I could just sing a lot. So, so we, you know, uh, we 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 played a lot, and then. I became into a part-time band post high school. There was no way I was going to college because I was going to be a rock star. So there's not a chance I was okay. going there. <laughs> and my parents, my parents, thank goodness, were cool with it because I'm one of six and everyone was going to college. And there, here I am saying, no, I'm going, I'm going to. So I, you know, um, I worked part-time in a band that, that, and then Lou Tedesco owned a band called The Touchables and uh, eventually found me. And I joined them in 1983. Through early 83 and, and that uh, was around the time of the show the untouchables so that was a great that was a great name around that that's right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes yeah so this is the whole by the way do you remember some of the songs you played back in high school like what were the songs that influenced you back then um so it was probably uh things like rock no, definitely rock so uh, yeah. probably groups like foreigner journey pop rock uh Certainly, Billy Joel, Elton John, Chicago, uh, yeah. any Beatles, any Beatles song, Paul McCartney, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, huge influence. Yeah, excellent. Hey, I want to play uh, another. Talk about rock. One of your nice, 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 really nice rock songs is the uh, one you call 1977 Star Trek. Star Struck. Do you want to talk about that? Star Struck. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of my favorite years in high school as a junior, and um, there was so much. So I decided um, this. That wasn't. I forget when I wrote the song. It wasn't that. Maybe a year ago. Um, decided to write about the year and all the stuff that was kind of going on and, and uh, sum it up into a, into a catchy song. Oh. Uh, and even at the end of it, I put in, because Love Boat was out that You remember the show Love Boat? I, of course, so I, yeah. I kind of <laughs> did the theme song at the end, but a take on it. It's really not the true theme song. I, I thought, yeah. They'd probably sue me if it ever got published, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of references, the whole song. And, and 
uh, it was the year Elvis Presley died. That was another reason I wanted to, uh-huh. to write this. And I'm a big Elvis fan, as you'll see on another song that you have. On. Oh, yes, The King. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. All right, so this is uh, 1977 Starstruck. That's it. <laughs> The steps of California Waiting for the actors to arrive I just caught a glimpse of Cher and Buddy Epson They each flashed a smile to my surprise Now the next thing I know I'm walking through Airport 77 Look at me, can it be Staring at Jack Lemon? Then all of a sudden, turn around, there's Roger Moore Watching the last season filmed of Mary Tyler Moore Oh, I just think I must have died and went to heaven It's 1977 Climb aboard, Captain Stu Bing's possession The stars of 77 of New York City Listening to music playing loud I just made a left on West 72nd And there was John Lennon among the crowd And then I looked through a window And couldn't believe my eyes I saw the news that took my breath away That Elvis Presley died I no more love me tender no heartbreak hotel I caught the last train to Memphis And bow to the king for his final farewell Oh, I just think I must have died And went to heaven It's 1977 Sally Fields, Terry Garr And Mike Lennon The stars of 77 Miami horns join the boss And Clarence Clay That's a great patch. What is that, by the way? Is that like a saxophone patch? It's a saxophone, yeah. They're all samples of the real, the, you know, real, real horns, and they're mm-hmm. they're incredible sounds. I mean, it's yeah. amazing uh, the technology, how real they sound with the breath and everything. So that was a that sax part was a paying homage to Clarence Clemens in the song "Jungle Land" by Springsteen. So I, I tried to uh-huh. mimic, not not copy it, but it's just yeah, yeah, so just it, it, it influenced by a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I love yeah, it. That was uh, fun. You know, let's talk about how you come up with the idea musically. Is there is there any kind of common stories of how you play with that, or is it is there some part of a song that makes you think of a different idea, or are you just drumming around when, you know, on the piano one day and come up with an idea rhythmically, it, or how do you go about doing it? It's mostly that. I mean, a lot of stuff comes out of thin air, but I'm I'm. I'm really lucky with the music part of it. So I'll sit at my grand piano. Most of my songs are started at the grand piano with my phone as acting as a dictaphone. If I come up with something catchy, I want to remember it. Um, so I'll, I'll spend some time. Uh, tons of stuff comes out of this, my, my brain. I just got to get it out, right? So I, I have a ton of stuff on my phone that I just... And then I go back to so it. If I like it enough, then that's when I come into my, my little makeup yeah. studio here and start to build it and start to do this thing sounds like. But the... I, as far as the lyrics go, always last. I never, I, they're always after the music. And I have to think really? about, yes, mm. always. Uh, yeah. I know there's some writers that do lyrics first. I think that's yeah. really hard to put music to lyrics. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, so yeah. then I just started thinking of, you know, 
things I want to start singing, but I could, it, it could be um, current events, it could be just old stuff, it could be love songs about my family or uh, life. Um, so there's really no formula, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. now that I'll see something, I'll hear something that triggers something, to say, ooh, maybe that, and I'll write it down in my car. If I'm driving, I hear something on the radio or news, something, I'll jot it down so I don't forget it. So but, you jot it down or do you uh, dictate it into your phone? Or both. I'm driving. If I'm driving, I dictate it on my phone. If I'm sitting there, oh. I can. I have a pad. I keep it in my car all the time. With a pad yeah. And I just jot down titles of songs. All of a sudden, I said, "Oh, that's a cool title," and I, and I don't want to forget it. So I. I now, you know, do you also have a perfect pitch where you can know the notes and you write them down, like you write I, them on I staff? I don't have perfect pitch. No, I don't. I have a usually have a pretty general idea of what key. If I'm yeah. singing in my head or in my car, I have a pretty good idea what key it's in when I get home. Really? So, oh, okay. I'm perfect pitch, but I'm pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't either. I have. I don't have any. I'm not even close. I just have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to actually dictate it. I have hundreds of ideas, but developing them is another thing, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I, I've met some musicians that say you got to take every idea and just develop the hell out of it until you're done with it. And, you know, as opposed to letting it just sit there yep. and fester. But, but yeah, listen, you do some crazy stuff. So, now. You had a love song, then you had Starstruck, but now you have a song that I want to play. It's got some very interesting, um, it's got a really fast section to it, I'll have to ask you about technically later, but it's called sure. It's Over, and I'm sure there's a story behind that. So tell us about there It's is. Over. Yeah. There is. So that's actually the end of the pandemic. So. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, all of us couldn't wait for this thing to end. And yeah. um, I mean, I guess some people think it's maybe not completely over, but it's all it's all but over, right? We're no longer wearing masks. We can be with each other. We're yeah, yeah. being it's feeling normal again. And that that's what it um that is what the song is about. It is about mm -hmm. the end of the, the end of this pandemic. So mm -hmm. um, that was easy to come up with. And then uh, you know, uh, that idea at least, because it was so troublesome to Oh my god. Yeah. Roll. Okay. Right. So this is it's over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's it really it's catchy. It is catchy. You really have a great I gotta tell you, these things have to see the light of day, my friend. They're great. <laughs> they really are. I can't I don't know why these aren't on, you know, the top ten or whatever. They're really nice. Um, uh, well you're kind. I think so too. You know, I'm I'm pleased with I'm pretty pleased. Yeah, you know, I'm probably my biggest fan, you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, they really they really are wonderful. You gotta get them out there. We gotta figure out a way to help you get these out there. So I'm hoping uh, this will help tonight, and then you can use this as you know. We'll have it recorded online. You can always sure. send it away to people. But uh, oh, yeah, uh, like the 1977 one. I'm thinking. I was calculating in my mind. The people that uh, graduated in 1977 are going to be pre they're going to be celebrating their 50th anniversary on 2027. So we have to get a campaign together to get that all popular and out there by 2027. So I like it. I like it. Yeah, like yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, now I want to talk more about your your uh, your Jersey days when you were playing the bar scene, yeah. and uh, Jersey had a great bar scene. As you you mentioned, there's a lot of great people that came out of there. Bruce Springsteen, yeah. Um, yeah. and then you actually ran into a guy who's uh, unknown at the time named Bon Jovi. And uh, <laughs> tell me the story on that because I love the fact that he even uh, opened for you guys once, which is incredible. He did, yeah. His um, you know his original name. Uh, was Bon Jovi, so it's very Italian. So John Bon Jovi, and then he switched it to it. He was in a band at the same time I was playing with the Touchables. Um, he was in a band called the Atlantic City Expressway. They were doing, they were a horn band. They were doing more Springsteen style music and the Touchables were doing a little more rock and new wave stuff. And we were both trying to get record deals. Now he, he had a huge uh, advantage. His uncle owned the Power Station, which is a major recording studio in New York City. That was his uncle. <laughs> So uh, and his mom's brother and um, yeah. he, you know, he would work there and just so he'd be around. So he, you know, his, he, his destiny was, you know, kind of predetermined, I think. So yeah. uh, I didn't have that obviously, but um, yeah. Now, by so, the way, didn't he have the same famous scene where is it Michelle Cox that came out in the audience? He had this, they, they played a, they, they had a videotape where this pretty woman comes out of the audience and jumps up on stage and brings her up and it was all, pre-planned it wasn't it made it no. was made to look like it was um it looked like it was that was for the moment. Dan dancing in the dark and that was uh courtney cox who, who jumped up courtney cox yeah so yes. it Same was all for. orchestrated i mean we looked all like it was for. all you know spur yeah. of the moment it was all orchestrated so yeah it was, it was cool but he their agency they were just beginning they were just about to go on a tour so they the agency needed them to get in front of a, a, a popular jersey band we were really popular had big crowds so they actually came and opened for us at a club down in South Jersey by the shore. <laughs> and uh, and that was fun having them open. They were really oh, my nuts. God. Yeah. And then they began their tour months and months later, uh, and they returned the favor. And they put the Touchables in front of them so that we opened for a large crowd in front of them. And that was pretty cool. And then they got on the tour bus. <laughs> That's almost the last we saw of them. You wow. Know, they, yeah. Um, what a ride he's been out since then, huh? Oh, man, yeah. oh, man. He did yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, did, did, did all right. He did all right. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little. <laughs> so, oh my God. It's fine. It's cool. Uh, the next one I want to do is called uh, Russian Kids. Yeah. And uh, I put a notation down here that it's um, a little spacey. So you want to tell us about the background on that and how you. Yeah, I was. I was. Um, uh, this this isn't that long ago. This is maybe a month or two. I was reading the, the, you know, the war, obviously, between Russia and Ukraine. And I was reading. A long, a lengthy article about it, and I, something I didn't know is that when the, these poor, the parents, a lot of parents were being killed right during this war. The war is still going on, but the kids were orphaned, so their children, so the Russians were stealing these kids and, um, you know, training them, you know, to become, you know, Russian children, even though they're Ukrainian. And there's a lot. I'm sorry, of, is this is this recently or is this in the this past? Is recently. This oh is my god! Recent. Yeah. Oh, wow. you could, you could, yeah, I had no idea that, you know, we know how bad the war is, what's going on there, but I didn't know that was happening. It makes sense. Kids were found in basements with no parents. And uh, so that 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 was so moving, this article, that it inspired this this song. And, wow. uh, and, and I had to be a ballad. I knew that. And um, I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. You'll hear that in a lot of my music, I think, that style. But uh, I'm proud of this song. This one, this is one of my 
one of my favorites I've probably ever written. Even I don't know if other people think that, but I certainly think it. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. a very, very touching topic. So it is. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in the night When we're all out of sight The soldiers came While rockets light the sky Cause halfway around the world And all those boys and girls Sit quietly in basements Where they hid then became a Russian kid The hospitals were filled With parents who'd been killed And no one left to hold them while they cried They're children of the state while troops just populate the cities and the streets where they live and they'll become a Russian kid All across the Holy Land a much familiar fight where children live You know, I can yeah, definitely it's see. A yeah. Horrific story. You know, it's a horrific, ter terrible story. And the, oh the my god! So, you know, yeah. as I listen yeah. to your lyrics, which were great, by the way, I could see you. you know images of kids and you know the war, war, war struck zones, and and you know what you might do, you know, is is maybe find college kids that are into uh, learning vide videography and, and find some talented ones that could find all these images online for you and put together this wonderful background to that song. And it would be a very powerful video that I think, you know, would really hit home, especially now with the whole thing in Ukraine. I can't believe it's still going on. It's just, it's just a nightmare, you know? It's, yeah, uh, it is. I'd like to think in 50 years that you, know, you would like to think by now we'd be as a, as a global civilization, uh, you know, working together better, but it's, it's, it doesn't seem to work, be getting any better at all, which is sad, you know? It is sad. It's really sad. And I'd love to have a video like that too. It's so, um, I do have some nephews that, that are pretty, pretty handy. So I should probably. Yeah. Give them a shot at it. Definitely. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I think it's going to have a lot more play on the internet with that whole visual thing as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to do now uh, the, the the king. So the king and I. In fact, when I first saw your title, I'm thinking, oh, the king and I is that like a spoof on uh, the, the famous you know theatrical thing? But yeah. it, no, you told me it's it's all about Elvis Presley. So it, give, yeah. give me the background of how you came about doing that. Yeah. So that was just you know I'm a big a big fan of uh, of Elvis, and um, I was messing around on my piano and I came up with this melody and these chords and you know that wasn't sure what I was going to sing about and somehow he popped in my head and then I, I said well I should make this about like me or you know someone being you know just so uh, you know into Elvis and like the, you know the king and me or the king and I right it's, it's mm. that kind of thing and then I'm like well that's a show but that's actually kind of a play on words so it's not about Yul Brenner you know and the king and I so it's just a play on the title of that play and I used it to title the song, which is appropriate. So mm. this one, I, this was fun to put together as, as well. So mm -hmm. um, that's how it came up. I just was messing around the piano as, you, as I always did. All um, right. Maybe it popped into my head. So there the it is. King, the King and I. Hotel, 
So do they have uh, uh, Elvis Presley personages in the, um, you know, in in, in, in the uh, Jersey area? Like were there? I don't think. Of, no. I, I I don't remember it now. I, not that I know of. No. I mean, uh, as I'm listening to the songs, I hadn't heard it in a little bit. I forgot I used a lot of the titles of his songs incorporated within the lyrics. Yeah, I, I noticed that. It was getting a kick out of that as I was listening to it, to it again. <laughs> I, I when did you When did you write that song? How long ago was that? <laughs> Uh, it was a couple months, few, few months, probably three months ago or so. I can't remember. Oh, really? So some of these are pretty recent then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A yeah. lot of these are newer. Um, yeah. I keep getting better, at least I think, getting better at producing them, the sounds and stuff. So I sent yeah. you more yeah. recent stuff than my old and older stuff. So, yeah. Um, now, I want so. to play this next song because it's a little different than your other styles. Uh, it's called The Other Side. What's the yeah. uh, backstory on that? That's about death. <laughs> it's okay. really about, yeah. yeah. In my family, we all die young. So, uh, you know, parents, uh, one of my brothers. So I, that, uh, this is about that. This is about hope, hopefully trying to connect with the other side is really what mm. this is about um, in, in, in general terms. So um, that, uh, I, I'm, you know, I didn't have any recent death in my family, but I'm trying to think what it's something inspired that. I'm, I'm blanking on it. Um, yeah. Well, you know, speaking about that, um, uh, I interviewed a, uh, uh, Robert Dale Klein a couple of months ago, and he has a song called The Side of Dirt, which is all about that, too. How about that? They even a better title. <laughs> yeah, and I actually had, years ago, I lost like nine people, family and friends, and my boss wow. Uh, wow. in six months. And um, and so I wrote a little piece. In fact, I'll, I, maybe I'll, I'll put it in the chat area. People can listen to it later. I wrote a piece just called The Friends and Family Pass. But, but this is uh, definitely, uh, and I had some notations here. That it was definitely unusual in some respects compared to other songs, but I thought it was worth listening to. So, The Other sure. Side by Greg yeah, this, is diff this one's different, yeah. Yeah. yeah.
your touch come from the other side And when I open them to my surprise I saw you smiling on the other side uh. That's yeah. some great imagery there, my friend. That would really yeah. be another great video. That's really, that, oh my God. I think so, too. It's got a lot of, it's a John Lennon-esque kind of song. I, I yeah, know, yeah. And um, and that was Lou again at the end, starting to solo. So oh, my God. I'm sorry yeah. I shut him off, but we have two more songs to do. I want to make sure we get them in. Oh, yeah, uh, no, no, I know. The hour's almost up, so, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk <laughs> about Have a Heart for a minute. Tell me about that. Oh God! Which, is that the? Um, oh, that one I just that's what, that one I just finished. I sent that to you recently. That's kind of the first time I dove into trying to write a dance, a dance song that um, my daughter like, listens to dance music, and I, you know, I'm just at my age, I'm just not writing anything like that. So I <laughs> took a shot at it, and I said, let me let me see if she likes something like this. So I put this thing together. I liked it, and she listened to it recently. She said, actually, she goes, that's pretty darn good. So she was maybe she's being nice. She's my daughter. How old is she now? She's seven. She's going off to college. She'll she's not. She'll be eighteen in August. So oh she's, my God! God love you. That's we're great. finally an empty nest. We got four of them. So the last one is is heading out the door. It's a uh, different world, my friend. Thankfully, oh, yeah. you and your wife get along really well, which is really yeah. wonderful. <laughs> we we do. Thankfully, yeah, that's sure. great. So anyway, that's just a dance well, song that you know. But it was kind of I don't know. There you go. Have a heart. I'm looking forward to Have it. Heart. Get stuck inside your mind and all can find you all the walls you built all around you. Place your bets with no regrets and take a chance on this romance and let your heart do what it wants to do. So please take my hand, look me in the eyes and understand. I love your reference to the Tin Man. That's great. That's great. So you know, 
Well, you know, I stole that. So I, I'll, I'll get sued if I ever try to publish it because those words, but I couldn't come up with another line. So the, the band America, if you remember that group from back in the 70s and 80s, sure. they wrote a song called Tin Man. And that line is exactly from it. I sang it a little bit different, but I it was so fitting for the song. I said, well, yeah. I'm not selling my music anyway, so the heck with it. So I decided to, to put it in there and I love the way it fits. And uh, But if I ever did try to publish this, I'd have to get, I just, I have to get the rights to it. I just change it or just change it a little bit so that it's not, you know, <laughs> yeah. I once handed um, Stephen King a song I wrote for his movie Tommyknockers. Well, for the book Tommyknockers, it wasn't a movie yet. And oh. years later, I heard about seven bars of my music that the composer used who did it. Oh, wow. I went to How a lawyer. That? He said, they can use up to eight bars of your music and not pay you a cent. They knew so, that. Yes, you're they right. They knew that. I, it's seven bars of my idea. And, and <laughs> I, I should have been. And he said, you should have just gone up to him and said, you know, obviously you, you were impressed with my let's let's collaborate. You, you know, but I just didn't want to get involved in it. But I was just really frustrated that 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 could be done. But so those things yeah. happen. But anyway, um, let's talk about the last one because there's a special story behind that and some things you intend to do with it. Song to be sung. So what's the background on that? Tell me about your plans with that one. Yeah, so my daughter and I love the movie <laughs> Sing. And it's um, it's like a Disney movie, but it's from a, um, the production company's Illumination. So it's not Disney or Pixar, but it's a big company. And they, um, they have two movies out, Sing 1 and Sing 2. And... Um, I decided I, you know, we love the movie so much, the music in it that I said, I'm going to write a song for this, uh, for this move, for the next one, for sing three, if they ever come out with it, turns out they are, they are going to come out with it. Nice. And, uh, so I wrote this pretty big production, which you'll hear in a moment, or at least a piece of it. Um, that is so fitting for the film. I just, I have to figure out how to get my daughter's been researching, trying to, trying to figure out how do we can get this to someone in that who's producing the film to hear this song. Um, so she found some contacts online and, we're going to give it a shot, but uh, that was the inspiration, that movie for this for this particular song. And um, who knows? <laughs> Maybe. I, I know. know. That's <laughs> you great. You never know. So, yeah, uh, good luck to you. This is yeah, thank you. to be fun. have gone left all alone now what could go wrong do you hear me would have believed i'd be standing right here with the spotlight upon me facing my fears on my own feel the crowd hear us now song to be sung. Now I stand here tall, wait for my cue from the moment I got here. I knew what to do. Can you feel me? Look at my face and the look in my eyes. I open song to the crowd and sing, sing from the top of your lungs, this is your song, this is your song to be sung.
There should be fireworks at the end of that. <laughs> I know that's, that's quite a production. I know. Oh I my god! Of, I had a really a lot a lot of fun with that one too. And it's just a great production. Yeah, it could be on. It's like a Broadway song, you know. It's just a lot of. Yeah, fun. definitely. Oh my god! What a fun. yeah! I, I just got some. Uh, Diane just sent something out. What a fun program! The lyrics to many of the songs are touching. Best wishes to both of the debuts of tonight. Thank you, Diane. Oh, I really appreciate oh. that. Uh, nice before I before I sign off and thank you officially, I just want to also tell people that um, uh, I've got a uh, event coming up that I'm excited about. And uh, let me just bring this up. Uh, Joe Mulholland, who I've interviewed in the past, is he's a professor of harmony harmony at um, Berkeley, uh, is going to be coming to visit us down in Wyndham, Connecticut. He's staying at our home, and we're going to put together a house concert for him on uh, Saturday, July 22nd. So not this Saturday, but next Saturday at 7 p.m. And we are raising money to uh, rehabilitate the Wyndham Inn, which is in my town. It's been shut down. It has to be renovated before it could be used again. And um, if you'd like to participate, it's $10 to, be, to get to uh, sign up to Zoom for that. And so I'm just going to put the, um, the, the link in here. Uh, and if you're interested, I'm just going to put it in the message. So it's in the chat. And if you click on that, you can, you can buy a ticket to it. Um, and in any event, um, I really appreciate everyone coming tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I would love to, um, oh, thank you, Diane said, thank you, Tandrew, for adding a song about friends and family. You're welcome, Diane. Thank you. Yeah, there's a link there that I wrote for friends and family past. If you, before I sign off, if you want to click on that and save it and bookmark it, you can listen to it later. But, uh, Greg, this has been a lot of fun and oh my God, you're so gifted. And this stuff is just <laughs> hiding on your, on your hard drive. We have to get it out to the world for the world to see and appreciate. So. Maybe the first thing you do is get your nephews to work on this last one, song to be sung, and just have you know wonderful dancing and and singing and then fireworks and just make it into a fun video and get it out yeah, there it on YouTube and it could Facebook. Be. I, I, I'll push them to do that. Uh, yeah, I think they can handle it. Yeah. So I mean, I literally got goosebumps tonight listening to some of your stuff. It's just really fun, and you know what I love Thank about you. it is, uh, unfortunately, some of the music these days that's popular is just also salacious and not you know evil and. And you've got beautiful music that's fun to listen to. Um, there's a song out there called Roses, which sounds like a nice song. I work out to it one time. And then I saw the video to it. It was I was so disgusted by the video. It was so oh. vicious and, and, and evil and and, um, yes. and sick. And then I thought, how could such a beautiful song be tied to something that's just so awful? And I just want to, I hope that your music, uh, you know, stays true to what it is and, and, and gets aligned with all this beautiful stuff out in the world because there is great stuff out there to celebrate. And your music is definitely celebratory music. So uh, keep doing what you're doing and get it out there, Greg. Get it out there. I'm going to help any way I can. I'm hoping that this video tonight helps you. It'll be posted sometime before the end of the week, you know, maybe by the weekend, actually, because I'm in a crazy week. But it'll definitely be up there. I'll let you know awesome. where it is. And I would love thank to have you. see it out there for you. So thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And, Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah. For a wonderful group here tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I look forward to... Uh, I hope to start doing this on a weekly basis. That's probably going to be a few months away, to be honest with you. But uh, I guarantee that a month from now, we'll have another one up there. And if you go to uh, composerscorner.com, uh, I will have uh, more things uh, in the future to feature. And so I'm going to also post that up there, composerscorner.com. Um, please visit that uh, often. Actually, it's just a composerscorner.com. I happen to take it to the page that has all the music on it, but a composerscorner.com. And in the future, I will have uh, you know upcoming events, and hopefully, we'll blow it out more and 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 have uh, it'll be easier to use. Right now, it's a little difficult to use, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And I hope over time to just keep doing this and having a collection of people, eventually having fifty composers a year online. So this should be fun. Anyway, have a great night, everyone. Thank you so much. You certainly made my evening. Greg, I hope we made yours, and I hope we everyone did. enjoyed themselves as well. Have uh, a great this night, was, all. This is a blast. Thanks, Andrew. Take care.